Okay, we're trying this again. What's up, everybody? Lord Zath with Sith Kitten. This time doing some replay analysis, something I haven't done in like a month. At least. Yeah, so it's going to feel good. So this is Zeke Goliath. Now, I've already gone ahead and done our um, screenshot for the battle. Uh, I've installed the usual mods and stuff like that uh, that I run. I'm trying a couple new ones, too, for the hell of it. So we'll see what that does. This is Craig Ells in the Goliath. This is a ranked battle. Now, because the season of ranked is all tier 10 every um, every uh, grouping or whatever, I don't know if this is bronze, silver, or gold. So we'll see what happens. Now, the Goliath is a ship that I hated grinding for, but I kind of enjoy playing. Uh, because the, the grind to get the Goliath is hella painful, especially, in my opinion, the Tier 9 Neptune. Uh, but at Tier 10, the Goliath is a hell of a lot of fun. She's got 234mm guns, uh, with one quarter inch cheap pen, means that she can penetrate 50mm of armor quite easily. Um, she's fantastic in a kiting away position, firing over the shoulder at uh, enemies, and then just kind of using the throttle juke forward backward game and stuff like that if she takes a big hit she can repair that hit because uh, she's got an enhanced uh, repair so as Craig is saying in chat already I'll do Goliath things and prepare to kite that's what you should see um, going on now he's up uh, unhappy that nobody's going a I'll tell you what Craig in this game I actually think it's a good idea for the team to not go a Shimakaze is pretty much going to die. And the reason I'm saying that is because there's carriers involved. And so, with three battleships and you, if you think about it, you would need to coordinate with one of your battleships. Okay, one stick with me, two battleships goes to A. You need the two together for mutual anti-air fire. Um, that's a lot to ask for in a ranked battle where you're not in communication with people on voice. Um, so I wouldn't worry too much about that. Now, I also want to comment, I don't like that initial salvo right there. Why? Because you were about to cap the, the, uh, the base. You actually, okay, you, look at that. You just capped it with barely enough time for those shells to, to hit you. Uh, if you, if they had hit you, then of course you would have been reset. Uh, and that would have been a bunch of waste of time. Nice fire there. And now your kiting arrangement, um, something else to think about too, is you may want to be heading farther uh, towards the southeast, like J7, J8. Uh, and that's to open up, um, basically force the battleships to chase you and possibly open up their, uh, their sides to your friendly battleships. Torpedoes are stun. Oh look, torpedoes. You're taking a lot in the butt. No comment on that one at all, kitten. I was I was expecting not touching it. I was so not touching that one. Expecting a comment. Okay, fair enough. Uh, either way, clearly there's the destroyer that went on your side. That's the enemy Shimikaze using 20 kilometer torpedoes. Those were detected quite easily. Um, Schlieffen is uh, charging Salem. So at that point, you can you can definitely help out. Um, but you might also want to suggest to your Schlieffen teammate to use his Hydro. Although I think he is using it. Oh, look, the Shimakaze is dead. What do you know? He <laughs> charged the Kerr first. Okay. At least he got the AK. Wait. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, yeah. He, yeah, he got yeah. the A cap, but why? Yeah. Schlieffen is uh, doing Schlieffen things, which is fine. Um. Yeah, at this point, I, I think what you're doing is good. Uh, you may want to consider using your Hydro shortly, simply because the Shimakaze's Torps should be in the water again for the next wreck. Oh my god, it's like you're listening to me. 
And as expected, the Shimakaze torpedoed the Schlieffen that was charging. Now I do like how you're maintaining the kite position um, because you know it target. Uh, is it? I can't remember the, the skill's name, but you basically know how many people are targeting you, so you know somebody's looking at you. Of course, they're going to be looking at the at the Schlieffen, so that's good. Salem kills the Schlieffen. That's unfortunate, but you know he did go like. Full on right at the uh, Salem, so. So yeah, I mean this is this is Goliath play. You sit the back, you farm, uh, you, you you piss people off to the point where they shoot you, and you pray to God that the the team can do the rest. So basically, you sit around and ask Hannah. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. I mean, you can't... Look, he's he's not going to go after the enemy Shimakaze. Uh, and, I mean, you, you, you have to hope that your midway, your carrier, will go and find their destroyer. So far, he has not. Um, oh, well. At this point, I actually might turn northward here. Montana has fully focused the Schlieffen because your Schlieffen is too busy giving broadside to him. Um, so this is your opportunity to turn back in. And the reason turning back in is important is once this Montana dies, you want to be ready to shoot the Mecklenburg. Uh, and you won't be able to do that in your current status. So you need to turn around and head back north again. Montana has two fires going, but see that fire there? It's in the middle. That means he's running fire prevention skill. So your aim needs to be farther forward as well. Try to get that third fire. Or alternately, you could switch to AP and chew away at the superstructure. That would be acceptable as well. Gotcha. Now, because of that late decision to turn, you are about 30 seconds behind where you could have been in engaging the Mecklenburg. Is that going to be... Uh, decisive? Probably not. Um, but, you know, you get your guns in it more, that's all. Craig says, I'm surprised I don't see more of these in range. Well, go back to what I was just talking about, Craig. This ship is highly dependent on the team. Um, you'll, you'll sit and farm, and all you can do is watch uh, the rest of your team. I mean, let's go back. We watched the Shimakaze YOLO charge a Kerr first. You couldn't do anything about that. We watched their Shimakaze torpedo twice your formation. You couldn't do anything about that. Um, you could help shoot down aircraft, but that means that you have to be closer to your teammates and not doing the thing that you want to do. So you can't help with that either. Um, typically, you can't capture a point. You manage to capture BCAP. Um, by mere seconds, actually, since you'd opened up, but you get the idea. Like, um, it, this isn't the kind of ship in a in a ranked competitive environment that is going to convert wins. In clan battles, that's a different situation because in clan battles, you do want to be off on the flank, you do want to be farming, you do want to cause the enemy to deal with you. So, A is being capped. People are noticing that the Shima is going to be at A. At this point, the Schlieffen needs to be paired up with you and heading to sea cap. Because, as you can see, your carrier says, Schlieff, try shooting him. I will spot the carrier. Go back to what I said a few moments ago about depending on your team. <laughs> All right. I can already tell you what's going to happen. Shimakaze is going to pull through here. He's going to spot the carrier. He's going to deep. He's going to twenty-kilometer torp the midway, um, and wreck him. Negative. And all of that wasted Please time support. trying to deal with the midway. Oh look, torpedoes coming in on the side. Huh. Funny how that works. <laughs> One other comment I want to make real quick. Um, 
you noticed if you noticed the the midway's positioning throughout this entire battle and enemy too was in the corner of the freaking map when you see something like that happening uh, you really don't want to ex expect a lot of help from your team uh in the carrier and not trying to trash him just simply saying go in there with that that idea that okay this person's not really going to help do what needs to be done at that particular moment he's off spotting the carrier now he's off trying to shoot the mecklenburg the mecklenburg doesn't matter what matters is the enemy shimakaze where is that shimakaze where are the torpedoes going to come from even a, a quick spot by the carrier will detect that ship let you know how far away he is uh, and then which way he's headed And that goes back to why I suggested you talk to the Schlieffen about going to sea together. The two of you guys pair up your anti-air bubbles, and that re relieves uh, the threat of aircraft uh, from your your Schlieffen. And by going to sea, you're probably going away from where the Shimakaze is going. Probably. You don't know because you've got no spotting. See, there's the midway planes. They're just looking right in, and they just get to dunk on the Schlieffen. They might even kill him. Not quite, but he's he's low. He's not quite dead yet. He is healing, so he is getting better. And another base cap for a, a ship that's supposed to be kiting in the backfield the whole game. Now, typically, carrier players that play in the corner like that, um, and then they start coming out and they don't care about destroyers, they don't care about destroyers until they see torpedoes or they see that the destroyer is literally on their butt. Then they care about uh, destroyers. So that goes back to what I was trying to talk about earlier. Okay, look at you, high caliber, save a star medal. Now you got the kill. Now you need to change your course. I don't like the course change north like this. I think your course change needs to be directly to A. Carrier plane spotted over here means the midway by now is over here at Alpha 6. So what's your threat? Your threat is a Shimakaze. You're probably going to win this on points anyways in time, so... Curious, do we see? Oh, look! Torpedoes by the midway! Huh! It's almost like I called Doctor. it a few minutes ago. What do you know? So what does that tell you? That tells you that the Shimakaze is chasing the carrier, which is even better for you. Because you can just go right to A now. Carrier's detected. Well, there are planes over there. And carrier is still detected, which means Shimakaze is chasing the midway. Fortunately for you, the midway just just uh, killed off the Schlieffen and got you a time extension. Again, like I've mentioned before, had you talked to the, the Schlieffen and had him go next to you, he'd probably still be alive. Okay, Goliath, I will spot CV. That's exactly what you need right now. Spot the carrier. Uh, I'm expecting the Shimakaze to go on to the B-cap shortly. I mean, it doesn't matter. The game's pretty much over anyways. So yeah, not not a bad battle, um, but definitely one that, that there's some opportunities for growth here. Um, nothing wrong with that at all. Here is the battle. Let's take a look at it from up top again. We'll try to highlight some of the key moments of that of that uh, game. Kitten, do you have anything to add at all, or? No, just finding it interesting, actually. All right. Here's, um, I'm, I'm not... Oh, go ahead. Here's the part where you fired, you turned away, um, and you're going to take damage right after capping. There it is. Like I said, a little bit too risky there. Go ahead, Kate. What were you What were you saying? Um, It was on your CV comment about the sitting in the corner. Mm. 
So what do you recommend a CV player? This is just curiosity. Okay. Because I know what I do, but that's me. Sure. What do you recommend a CV character should be doing with their ship while they're out in the air? So um, that's a great question. In between sorties, in between me launching planes, or maybe right when I launch planes and set them on course, I'll hit the M key and take a look at the map. And I want to get an idea of, of the tactical situation. Uh, now, I paused it here for a different reason, but this is a good enough uh, time to stop for the tactical positioning. If you look at the minimap right now, the midway player has two choices. Well, three. One of the choices is, is he's going to the corner, right? But his other choices are to go north and work with his Montana or stay south. Where I would probably take my midway is I would still go to the border or the edge of the map, sure. But I'd probably take him behind what I would consider to be the, the stronger part of, of my force. So I'd probably put him into... Uh, J3. And the reason for that is pretty simple. Uh, in order for my carrier to be struck by the enemy carrier, he's going to have to go through three different air bubbles, anti-air bubbles. Um, and most likely he's not interested in me. The enemy carrier is most likely interested in my teammates. If you note, he's dropping the Shimakaze right now as the Shimakaze is about to YOLO charge the Kerr first for whatever reason. Um, so I would probably put him there. And then, like I said, in between, when, when I launch my sorties, I'm always thinking to myself, is, is, am I safe in this position? Because if I'm not safe in this position, I don't want to be here. I want to change and head someplace else. Um, I think you saw that in my Aquila replay. Um, but uh, the, the other option, if you went north, I might go towards Foxtrot 1. Um, the only problem with that is you are broadside to the battleship line for a while. And, well, you don't necessarily know what the enemy Shimakaze is going to do. You've got two battleships and cruiser here. So it's really just one battleship up here. Plus, you don't know where that enemy destroyer is. If, if this carrier player went to, to F1 and didn't care about the Shimakaze, like he or she didn't care in that last battle... You would have been dead a lot earlier, right? The Shimakaze would have just foamed at the mouth and killed him. So um, if you're going to be playing carrier more aggressively like that, trying to trying to work with your push side, then what that means is you need to, or well, technically this would be the flank side, I, I guess. I don't know if they're, if they're kind of pushing. But anyways, um, either way, you need to be constantly thinking about where you are, what threats you have coming in. So, Shimakaze is about to ram the curve. Well, yeah, there it is. Now, this Montana here, brilliant positioning. Um, but he's going to give that up, and that's unfortunate. You're focusing down Salem. Schlieffen's on Salem. Watch this. Your Schlieffen just melts. Why does he melt? Hmm. Your Montana gave up that position on their Montana, kept going. That's sad, because he would have had a really good broadside on him. Here's the part where you could have been turning around sooner, because the Montana clearly cares about the Schlieffen. Dead. Here's the part where... Okay, you're pairing up with the Schlieffen, you're together. Tell him, let's go to sea together. You don't. And watch how many airstrikes he gets. That was one airstrike he had on him. Midway sending another one. There's number two. This carrier is not so great because if you noticed, he flew over your anti-air, or she flew over your anti-air bubble to get a drop on the Schlieffen. Here comes drop number three on the on the Schlieffen. But wait, there's more. And there's the drop that will kill him. Four airdrops. When it's this late in the game and the points are that close, I don't think about being aggressive. I think about trying to save my teammates. How can I save my teammates? How can I prevent them from either, you know, making a bad decision and getting themselves killed or, um, you know, not making a bad decision, but still finding a way to get themselves killed. Um, I often find in this game, in competitive mode, um, when players don't know what to do next, they typically make a decision and that decision oftentimes leads to their doom. So it that that's where I would go back to 
communicate with the Schlieffen and say, hey, let's go to sea together. Let me escort you. We'll work together as a team. We'll take down the Mecklenburg, whatever else. And I think you, you probably would have won this battle sooner. You definitely wouldn't have had as many XP, as much XP, because obviously XP is based off your damage. Faster gains means lower damage. But if you're playing ranked and you're interested in the steel rewards or advancement, etc., etc., a win is a win is a win, and a faster win means you can jump into the next game and win the next one that much sooner. All right, well, that should just about cover uh, this replay. Uh, Kitten, any other questions? Anything else you want me to talk about before we dive into no, the next No, actually, one? you answered mine. Cool. All right, well, YouTube, thanks for watching. Um, if you haven't already done so, please consider subscribing to the channel, liking the video, and throwing a comment down. It always helps. But more importantly, I do have a uh, giveaway going right now for my Aquila. Uh, that's a uh, the Tier 8 Italian aircraft carrier. Check it's that. It's so fun. It is fun. It is fun. I convinced you to buy it, didn't I? <laughs> no, actually, I won it. Oh, really? Nice. How'd you win it? Uh, Sewn. Oh, okay. Okay. Very nice. Um, in any case, that giveaway is going, so you should definitely check that out. I also am going to have another really epic giveaway coming up shortly, so if you don't mind, take a moment, subscribe, ring that bell so you're alerted as to when the next stuff comes. Um, and I've got an awesome Fabletics uh, unbagging to do, possibly tomorrow as well, so we'll see what happens. But until next time, thanks all for tuning in. Thank you, Kitten, for hanging out, and I'll see you all. Anytime. See you all out there. Bye, peeps. Bye-bye.